Today is going to be a different video because we have a bunch of problems. The Chidi has a dead camera, the fan and the dryer is sounding like a dying donkey and my chamber heater is starting to become a molten mess. This video is also sponsored by PCBWay but more on them later. This puppy is on the table, we are going to gut it and for that we are going to need the following. I have looked around and this was the biggest recommendation on camera replacement that is not the stock unit. This is the one from Creality, the Creality Nebula camera. Now to make this work we are going to do some 3D printing because we need a new housing to make it fit right here in this corner. First of all let's remove the camera that is in there right now. By the way this didn't work for the last three weeks and now it's randomly decided to work again. What the hell? Removing this should be fairly easy just lift it up like that. We have some double sided foam tape right over here and then we have two hooks keeping everything together and right here in the back we have a cable that we need to remove. So this is the unit, one big problem. We destroyed the wiring at the back. I pulled out one, after a while I pulled out the second. This one is glued shut, so I just snipped it off. We are going to recrimp everything. And in the meantime I was doing a whole explanation and also this sucker died! God damn it! <laughs> so, to recap, this is going to be the new camera, the Creality Nebula. And it looks like we have quite a decent amount of USB cable. So maybe I am lucky and I'm just going to replace the cable altogether. So the cable situation right now, this is going to be the USB cable to the webcam that is in. And then it just follows this rail to the back and it plugs into the motherboard. So we might be lucky and this might be enough USB cable to work with. We are also going to need this. This is from JustLine and this is a camera adapter mount for the Nebula camera. The thing I have right here in my hand. And apparently we need to disassemble this completely. We only need the guts and not the housing. I'm going to try and look how we are going to disassemble this. Now these legs are probably just popping in from the side, just like that. Now we have the camera body. We kind of have a plate in here. This is probably just snapped in with some clips. And yep, this is going to be the plate in the back. And we can see inside they are using two screws to hold in the camera into the housing. And just like that, we have our Creality camera and now we need to print a new housing for it. So in order to make everything work, we will need to do some printing. And this time we are going to use the brand Sunlu. Sunlu has new engineering type filaments and this is going to be easy PA black in easy nylon. Not sure if there's any nylon in it, but nonetheless, we are going to use this and we are not going to print it on the GD plus four. No, no. We now fixed the Prusa Core one. It received the sliced file from our laptop. I also found in the menus how to disable those annoying uh, messages. After the update, all the messages were back. You can see the video right up there where we do all the testing on the Prusa Core 1 VFA issue. So I had to disable all these warnings. So it stopped being annoying. Now it is preheating and in about a half an hour, we should see what is going on. We bit of stringing, but we have something we can work with. So this is a super neat model. We are going to use the original back housing. We are going to remove this part. We don't need that anymore. And this is going to snap in the original housing, replacing the part you can see right over here. The only thing left to do is turn in the two bolts and we even have some articulation. So right over here, you can see two nubbins on each side. And right over here, we have those nubbins and you will be able to tilt this camera back and forward. Super, super interesting. I'm really excited to see the results. But first, let's do some assembly work. I have pre-wired the cable that came from this webcam. So first of all, we are going to connect it back together. Now we need the original housing. This is going to snap together like so. And now we can hang it right here in the corner. And we have our new webcam installed. And so here we have it. We only need to remove the protective film just like that. And now we can test our camera setup. And here we have it. This is going to be the new camera look. Let me do a new test print with the time lapse and let's compare that with the old camera. Very easy fix. I highly recommend the Nebula camera. If you want the camera, there will be some links down below. Now for the next project, that is going to be a little bit more involved because we are going to use the Algo Jupiter and do some Resin testing. Wow, that has been over a year. I have turned that puppy on. And here we have it. These are going to be our final 
parts that we are going to use in the new heater system. We have a little bit of yellowing, but it is pretty straight. This one is a little bit warped and I guess it is because we are under supported because the other one, this one over here, got supported properly and this printed just perfect. We over cured the supports just to see how yellow it would get and it is getting pretty yellow. Now they are claiming this is resistant up to 200 degrees celsius. So I'm going to test ABS against this piece of resin with an open flame and see what is going to happen. So I'm going to hold my test pieces about 10 centimeters from an open flame. This is not going to be super scientific. It is just to see if this is truly more heat resistant than a regular ABS part. Here goes ABS. This is about 10 centimeters. <laughs> and we are already starting to flame and smoke up. This is looking at it from a different angle. Yeah. ABS is not so happy. This is a ceramic like. Let's take a look what will happen with this one. It is taking quite a lot longer. And there is nothing really happening. This is super cool. We are starting to get a little bit of color deformation. And there we go. It took way longer to start burn. And it is not burning like the ABS is doing with a wide open flame. So it also looks to be self extinguishing. So this is a very good result from a printed piece of plastic. Let's try the top side a little bit closer this time. So yeah, it is not super self extinguishing, but it does look like it is way more heat resistant than we are seeing with the ABS part. The ABS instantaneously bursts into fire. And just like that, my next print failed. If you don't want to deal with resin because it is stinky and annoying, you can use the services of PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop and you can do anything from milling, 3D printing and even resin printing like this right over here. All the way from PLA to your high grade engineering filaments. So if you have a project just like me but don't have the materials to do so, give PCBWay a try. The links will be down below. Now I think it goes without saying that you need to be careful doing this kind of stuff and you should not do it at home because my complete shop is super well ventilated. And on that note, if you want to see that video, I have a shop video right over there. You can see everything going on in my shop, the ventilation, what I do to extract the fumes and to keep myself healthy. Now about these resin parts, these are something different. If I feel these things, it kind of feels like a resin, but I know it's not a resin. It does, however, has some filler in there. About 30%, I think it is going to be some kind of a ceramic compound encased with plastic and it is going to give you that heat resistant that you are looking for. Now, all these parts have been designed to have some air pass through. So these ridges right over here to keep the core, the heater core nice and cool. Well, apparently with my ABS unit I used before, that was not enough. Here is my little failed prototype. Let's remove the other cores and replace them with these ceramic-like heater elements and see after a few hundred hours if we really have a problem. But Xiaomi is not known to be a bullshit advertiser, so the claims that they are making are probably going to be fairly correct, I would say. So I'm going to trust them on that, replace these cores, and then we can replace this into the rhetoric enclosure, because this right over here has been made for the rhetoric. If you haven't seen this video, then there is also a video right over there about this heater core built. It is super sweet. It is a high power output. This is about 500 watts of total heat capacity and a, what I would call fairly elegant design with a lot of flow through so that we get a nice circulation with a big ass fan. Now, enough rambling, time to replace all these touching parts and then get back to the next thing that we need to fix. These are going to be all the parts we replaced with the ceramic inserts. You can see it right over here, the two white pieces and then we have two white pieces in the bottom right over here, completely insulating the print from the heater right over here. So this ceramic part is going to hopefully keep up. Right now we can actually see it. If it's going to discolor or not, we could see it in the fire test. Now for instance, this is a top part. 
we can see zero melting going on. This is another top part, but here we can see the top side got a little bit toasty. And then we have the second bottom part, the first one we put on fire and we can definitely see it got a little bit too hot for comfort. But right now everything is nicely put together. The only thing we need to do is just reassemble it again, just like that, a few bolts in here. And then obviously before we do that, we need to bolt in this complete housing to the side of the rat trick, but it is going to be mounted just like that. And like you can see, if you want to add a thermal fuse right over here, because some people mentioned that there is plenty of room to put in a thermal fuse of your liking. So like I mentioned, if you want to build this, there is going to be a video right up there. All the files are going to be included. Please do this at your own risk. If you're going to burn down your house, you are solely responsible. And then we have right over here, the next item that is broken, the Eibos Polyphemus. This has started to sound like a dying donkey. Let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> the fan inside is completely dead. Now, Polyphemus was so kind to me to send over two new back plates. Polyphemus sent this for review. We never reviewed it. However, I am going to use it when we are doing our print corner in the back, the red trick is going to have this polyphemus for the heavy spools that I'm going to use. I'm going to try and source three kilogram ABS spools. And this puppy right over here is going to be perfectly capable to keep it nice and hot. We tested it. Everything we set 60 degrees, it is completely capable of reaching those 60 degrees. However, the fan on the bottom, so this little dinky fan right over here, is susceptible to dying. So they sent me two of them. They are aware. I hope they are going to fix it. Now, this should be a quick and easy fix. So let's dive into the polyphemus and look what we can find. We need to remove the pads right over here. And then we should be able to remove a few bolts. You can see it right here in the housing. We have one bolt, two, three, four bolts. Remove the back plate, replace the fan that way, and we should be golden. Now, this is super wasteful. Not sure why they have sent me the whole back housing and not only just the fan. So, I mean, this part right over here, not really sure. But hey, at least the warranty, although this is a review sample, seems to be top notch. Every iBoss dryer is going to get a spare motor. It is going to be for the auto spool rotation. Well, it is not really auto. It is just a dumb rotation system. So if you're going to use that a lot, the motor seems to be crapping out pretty early and they are just standard shipping out another one. So the back housing should be coming off something like this. Now, the only thing I want to do is plug it back in. It seems to be spinning normally, but unfortunately it is dead. This is the broken fan one. Here we have a new fan. Let's plug it in and test it to see if it's actually the fan and we don't have a dead power connector that's connected. The fan is spinning and it is dead silent right now. All right, let me close it up and then we can finish this video. What we also can see is the rotating motor is held in with two bolts. So if you ever need to replace it, two bolts and it is out. Let's put back on the rubber feet, power it on for the last time. And right about now I can start to feel the hot air coming out of the back and the front. So it seems to be working. Let's put on the spool. And I'm going to show you while I'm at it what the 360 rotation function is. There is just a button right over here. And now it is going to spin those rollers and it is going to do a very poor job of rotating. I just helped it a little bit. You can barely see it, but it is rotating the spool. It is going to depend on the quality of your spool. But like you can see, it is going to try and rotate that spool holder. So you can get an even heat distribution over the spool and all of that. Now we also have the extender top right over here. So the basic top is going to be just this top part and you have a little bottom part right over here. And that is going to be capable of housing 
three kilogram spools, which is what we are going to try when we are doing our print corner right over there. And if you are interested in seeing this flash forge, we have the AD5X multi uh, color printer right over here. Make sure that you're subscribed because this is going to be your next video. And if you didn't know, we also have a Discord and with we, I mean Team7 and I, I am the resident YouTuber on there. If you want to talk to me or see what we are up to, then make sure to give us a visit. The link will be down below and I'll see you in the next one.